Hello friends, this video on evolution part 5 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now the question is, what are the evidences of evolution? So how do we know that evolution has ever happened or not? I mean, because the organisms which were existing that time, they had a definite lifespan and they lived that life and they are dead. So how do we prove that evolution has happened? Well, there are quite a few evidences of evolution which tell us that these process of evolution so let us look at the various evidences which prove that evolution has ever taken place. Now how do we get to know that? Now the basic concept behind this is that if we follow the evolutionary relationships, we will find that all organisms have come from a common ancestor. So common ancestor is a very, plays a very key role here. Now as I mentioned before also, the different organisms which we see today I mean, they are extremely diverse. They are extremely different from one another. So it is very hard to believe that they have all come from the same ancestor. Why is it so? That's because the more common the characteristics, the more closely two organisms are related. So what do we mean by this? Now, when we say that the more common the characteristics, we are actually talking about the similarities. The more similar two organisms are, we say that they are more closely related to each other. So let us take the example of human beings and we will see that how we can actually say that whether two human beings are more closely related or not. So let us look at this. Let us suppose this is a couple and they are their kids. So these two kids, if you look at them, they look so similar, right? There are a little bit of differences like their hair color, the skin complexion, etc. But otherwise, they share a lot of similarities. Why? Because they are real, they are their own brothers. So they have the same parents. So they share so much of similarities. Now, these two kids, they get married to two different ladies and then they again have their kids. Now, if you compare this one with this kid, you see they do not share that much of similarities as they shared. That's because now they are not, they are cousins. They do not share the same parents. However, they share the same grandparents, but their parents are different, right? But since their parents share some common traits and since they have the same grandparents, they might share something. A little bit of similarity might be there. Now again if they get married and they give birth to their kids what happens all these three kids they look very similar to each other because they share the same parents. Again these two they look similar to each other because they share the same parents but if you compare any of them with any of them they do not share much common features because now they sh their parents are different, their grandparents are also different, but their great great grandparents are the same. So basically, the more similar you are, the more closely you are related. So two brothers are more closely related than two first cousins. They are more closely related than two second cousins. So more similarities means more closely related and less similarities means that they are related, but they, they are distantly related. So this is how the evidences of evolution were also deciphered to understand the relationship between organisms. Now we will see what were the various evidences which prove the existence of evolution. Now some of the common evidences came from morphology and anatomy. So we will see what, what do we mean by morphological and anatomical uh, evidences. Evidences also came from fossils which were buried under the rocks. Evidences came from England around 1850 where we saw that the population of white-winged and dark-winged moths changed. So we will talk about that story, then you will get to know. Evidence of resistant variety of many organisms. It was also found that there were many organisms which were uh, which got killed to certain antibiotics, but then later a variety of the same organism evolved which were resistant to that particular antibiotic. So these are some of the evidences which proved that evolution existed. So let us discuss about each of them and see how they proved the existence of evolution. So let us first talk about the evidences from morphology and anatomy. 
So first of all, what do we mean by morphology and anatomy? So whenever we talk about morphology, we mean to say the external structure of something. So the structure of form and structure of organisms and their structural features, they are all studied under morphology. So it is all about the structure. When we say anatomy, what do we mean? It means the study of the body plan of animals, how it is and we can study anatomy only by dissecting the different organs of that organism because it will not be visible from outside. From outside, you can only look at its external structure. For example, if you consider human beings also, for human beings, by looking at a person, you can actually tell about his morphology. Like he has got two ears, two eyes, where are the ears located, where are the eyes located, etc. So looking at any part of the human body, for example, the human heart, looking at the heart, you can tell about its morphology, its structure as such. But if I talk about anatomy, you actually need to dissect that part and look at the plan inside, look at its internal structure and see how the structure has been planned. So anatomy is nothing but you can say it is a division of morphology where you dissect and look at the body plan. So there also you are basically looking at the structure, but you are looking at the structure at a deeper level. So that is anatomy. So looking at the structure of various organisms, there were certain evidences which were found and which told that evolution existed. So let us talk about the homologous organs. Now what do we mean by homologous organs? Now these are organs with common origin and structure but they play different functions. Now. What do we try to mean, say when we talk about homologous organs here? Now, these organs actually tells us the evolutionary relationship existing between different species. We will see that in different species, in organisms belonging to different species, they are certain, the cer certain parts of their body, they are similar in structure, they have similar origin, but they perform different functions because they are present in different organisms. So that shows that they have something in common, even though the two organisms look so different, but still they have something in common, which shows that they might have originated from the same species. So they might have had some ancestors in common. So one of the best examples to understand this is the four limbs of amphibians, reptiles, birds and mammals. Now I hope you all would agree that amphibian, reptile, bird and mammal, they are all very much different from each other. So you th if you think of an amphibian, a reptile, for example, if you think of a lizard as a reptile, you think of a frog as an amphibian, you think of a bird, say a crow, and you think of a mammal, for example, human beings. So if you compare a human being with a crow or a lizard or a frog, do you think that all of them look similar or in any way do you think that they might have had the same ancestor? No, right? Because they look so very different as far as their external structure and you know, their behavior and everything is concerned. They are completely different from each other. They all belong to different species altogether. But when you look at their four limbs, if you compare the structure of their four limbs, so this is how their four limbs look like. And do you see a lot of differences? So slight differences are there in the way they are arranged, but otherwise structurally their four limbs are all the same in all of them. So let me tell you clearly the parts of the four limbs. Now in the four limbs you can actually see the various bones which together make the entire four limb. So we have spoken about all these when we discussed the skeletal system if you remember. So this part is the humerus, so this bone is called humerus and here you have two bones as you can see everywhere, right? So the upper one is the radius and the lower one is the ulna. So let us suppose this is radius and this one is ulna. So everywhere you have one radius, one ulna, one radius, one ulna and one radius, one ulna. Then you have here, you have the carpals. So here also you have the same carpels, here also you have the same carpels and here also you have the same carpels. After carpels you have the metacarpels on your fingers. So this is metacarpels and finally these are the phalanges which you see towards the tip of your fingers. 
so they are the phalanges now all of these parts are present in all of them but they all belong to different types of organisms maybe this belong to the amphibian this belong to the reptile to the bird and to a mammal but all of them have got the same structural arrangement of the forelimb but the purpose of the forelimb in each of these organism is different. In some of them, the forelimb helps in walking. In some of them, it helps in flying. In some of them, it helps in running. In some, it helps in swimming. So the purpose of the forelimb or the function of the forelimb is different in all the, these different organisms. But their structure and their origin are the same. So this shows that these all these organisms, all these different classes of organisms might have come from a common ancestor. So here you understand that how morphology and anatomy gives you an evidence that evolution would have existed. Because the study of morphology and anatomy helps you to study the structure of the forelimb of these different sets of organisms. And it shows that since their structural organization is same, there are chances that they might have had the same ancestor. And that is is how they could be evolutionary related to each other. So that was about the homologous organs. Homo means same because they have same origin. Logus is related to location. So basically they are located. It, it means to say that they have come from the same origin. So they are like located at the same place. So they are homologous organs. So these homologous organs is a type of divergent evolution. What do we mean by divergent evolution? That word divergent means from a common point when different things diversify. So what was the common point here? The common origin. From common origin, different functions are being performed and that is why it is called divergent evolution because it all happened from one place. The same thing is present in different organisms but there it is used in different way. So that is how homologous organs talk about divergent evolution. Let us now talk about the analogous organs. Uh, analogous is just the opposite to homologous. So these organs, they perform similar function but they have different origin and structure. So it is just the opposite to homologous. So here the structure and the origin that is different. So they have originated from different uh, places and their structures are also different but they perform the same function. So they are called analogous organs. So let us take the example of wings of bat, birds and insects. Now all of them have wings and what is their function? The purpose of wings is to help that organism to fly. And in case of birds, insects as well as bat, all of them have wings and in all of them, the wings help them to fly. So the function is the same. But if you look at the structure of the wing in all of these, for example, this is the bat, this is a bird and this is an insect. If you try to look at the structure of their wings, even by looking at the wing, you can see the, that there is a lot of difference in the structure of their wings. If you looked at it internally, you will see this is how the uh, wings internal structure is. So the internal structure doesn't share any similarities. So here if you see, there are so many structures coming out of here but here there's nothing like that and in case of insects it is all the more different so basically the structure and the origin of the wings are so very different but all of them perform the same function so in case of bat you see that the skin fold stretched mainly between the elongated fingers so here you see the skin has been stretched and the skin has been stretched between the elongated fingers these are the elongated fingers Whereas in case of birds, you can see a feathery covering all over the arm. So the entire arm is being covered. So that's why you do not get to see the arm of the bird so often because it is completely covered by the feathers. So here the structure is completely different, but still they perform similar function. So this corresponds to convergent evolution. So what do we mean by convergent evolution? Converging means when different things come and they meet at one point. So that is called convergent. So here, those all these organisms, their structures are different. Their origin is also different. Everything is different. But end of the day, they are doing the same job. So that is why they are meeting at one point. And that point is the same function. So that is why it is an example of convergent evolution. 
So let us talk about some other evidences like a comparative embryology. So a study of the embryology also tells us that how uh, evolution existed once upon a time. What is embryology? Embryology is nothing but the study of embryo. We all know what is embryo. So this embryo gradually grows to form a small organism. So if you actually look at the structure of embryo of various type of animals, various classes of animals, you will see that the early structure of the embryo looks so similar in all of them. So here in this picture, if you see the early stage of the embryo, this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. Do you think that there is a lot of difference between them? So if you just look at these pictures, you will find that, okay, yeah, they look almost similar. So some, something is little shorter, something is little thicker, something is little thinner. So those kind of differences you can make out. But otherwise, they look all more or less similar. But when I tell you which all organisms embryo is this, you will be surprised to know that. So this one, the first column corresponds to a fish. The second one is for a salamander. The third one is for a turtle. So this column is for a turtle. The fourth one is for a chick. This one is for a pig. This one is for a cow. This one is for a rabbit. And the last one is for humans. So if you see, this is how the human embryo look like and this is how the embryo of a cow look like. So there is not much difference. But when you look at human beings or cows or pigs or rabbits or turtles, they are all completely different from each other. But their early embryos do not look that different. What does this say? This also tells the same thing that there must be some common origin. Now, for those who doesn't know what is an embryo, the embryo is formed from the zygote. Zygote is that single cell which is formed as a result of fertilization, that is fusion between the male and the female gamete. This zygote then undergo repeated division to form embryo. So embryo is uh, or like a two-layered structure. Gradually, it becomes a three-layered structure. And then with repeated division, the embryo gradually develops into a small baby. So here you can actually see that how the embryo grows in each of these organisms. Now, as the embryo grows, the differences start to increase. And you see when it grows considerably, so this is the, a small human baby and this is a small fish. But they look so very different from each other, right? So now the differences are quite noticeable between the small fish and the small human baby. But when you looked at the early embryo, the differences were not that huge. So looking at the structure of the embryo also, we can say that different classes of organisms shared a common ancestor. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for an easy four-step learning process absolutely free of cost. Watch video lessons, ask questions, refer notes and take an online test. Thank you once again.